I try to be careful with you. Now I'm, I'm growing up a little bit more. I try to be careful with you and not um, promote always this sense of urgency to do things because I've learned over time if, if you push that too hard, people get careless and we'll throw stuff together. And even with the best of intentions, it won't produce what we thought it should. Whatever we do for God, we have to be thoughtful and prayerful, meticulous, detailed. Because it has to last. It has to last beyond us. And so my emotions want me to, want me to say, let's hurry up because of what just happened as we're trying to get things in place to truly adopt Crestwood. So I won't tell you to hurry up. I'll just tell you to pray harder. And step up. Step up. Do your part. Do your part. Get beyond just being a beneficiary. Okay? Please, please, please try to listen to me. Please. Get beyond just being a recipient of blessings. And let's become a dispenser of them. Let's become the people that God can disturb in the middle of the night because he trusts us. And he can say, I need you to go. Let's become them. Let's become them, the people that God can trust with a burden. A burden that's beyond your household. You already got those, and you know what you're trying to fix at your house. God has, have you, have you not learned by now that whenever we ask God to fix something of ours, his response is, go fix something of theirs. And John, I think I finally got it figured out, because when he makes me go work on somebody else, I get out the way so he can work on mine. Because my hold up has not been the availability of blessedness. My hold up in fixing mine is that too often I'm in the way. I'm still overly committed to my way. And not allowing God to be the way. I need you to trust what I'm about to say to you. You have greater capacity. Period. Even if you find yourself saying, I'm overwhelmed. I promise you, you have greater capacity. I need you to dust off those areas of your heart that are reserved for others so that you can tap into your capacity. Do you believe God was telling the truth when he said he made you in his image, then there's a text that resonates with me that connects to that text. And that text is, describes God and it says he's unsearchable. That means he has no bottom. He has no bottom, he has no walls. 
as far as you can see, there's God. If he's unsearchable, then what are you? You have greater capacity. But we keep building up fictitious walls that become very real to us only because we say they exist. Whatever you pronounce becomes your reality. Your reality alone. God never agrees. So that's why he still calls it disobedience. So he keeps still demanding more and you keep pointing to a wall he doesn't see. You're frustrated with God because he says, give me more. And you talk about God, I've done all that. He doesn't see the wall. He hears you while he's looking at his blueprint. He knows who he made. You'll hear me say something in the message today that I'll give to you right now because this nugget from the Holy Spirit has changed me. And he asked the question that I'll ask later. He asked me the question. He says, how do I improve your self-worth? He said, how, Lord? He said, through my expectations. He says, my expectations reveal what I think of you. He says, so you will be wise to stop telling me no when I reveal another expectation. Because you're basically telling God I'm not worth that. And the most insulting thing you could say to an artisan, an artist, a creator, is to tell them the worth of their creation. You are the masterpiece of God. He was so detailed with you that he says, I numbered the hairs on your head. Think, think about that. That means he just wasn't brushing. Like a painter does. Just take a brush and fan it. Where you lose count of how many strokes. One hair at a time. One. Hair number two. Hair 237. That's how much you mean. valuable, more valuable than the Mona Lisa. So valuable that God had to create a museum for you. He called the earth. And he puts you on display. For all the world to see. Now we got our mind remind of this. Especially these little beautiful ones that are coming along. You are a masterpiece. Regardless of how little daddy thought of himself, regardless of how little mama thought of herself, the real appraiser has come along. And he's trying to tell you, no, that's worth it this it's not about arrogance it's not about false praise it's about truth so valuable to God that he would rather die than live without you that's what Calvary was declaring
And if you don't believe that, you can't teach that. So stop trying to tell your children and others to be great when you won't be. Quit crying over their poor decisions as they watch you make yours. Quit trying to send them places you're not willing to go. That's what most of our heartache is. I want mine to be better than me. When the natural human tendency is to be like you. So you have to go reach better. So they're so familiar with it that less than becomes an insult. I'm really praying. Just got my eyes open. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Let them know you're flawed but usable. Squeeze that hand again and say there's beauty in your flaws. Hmm. There's connectivity and relatability in your flaws. I not only can see you, but I get you. Have you ever met somebody who can articulate your pain better than you? You get me. So God does masterful work. Broken objects. So much so that man has learned to do the same. Whenever you visit old churches, the thing that catches your eye more than anything are the stained glass windows. Beautiful pictures created by broken pieces. looking at you now and your God stained glass window you are a beautiful picture designed out of broken pieces that lets the sun in you are loved today not just by God but by me, I'm grateful for you. You didn't have to spend your Sundays with me. You didn't have to share your gifts. You didn't have to sign on to build something that builds others. You are appreciated. desire is that your affiliation here helps you to realize your value and that you go forth and give God the glory he deserves from you that you go forth and find the peace you've been looking for that you go forth and you fall in love with the person in your mirror. And one day you can tell God, as you look at yourself, you did a good job. You did a good job. Every place you sent me, you did a good job. Every broken piece 
reflects your glory. Every broken piece captures the light in a different way. That broken piece called my heart reflects that you fix hearts. The time my mind was broken reflects the glory of your ability to regulate minds. The time my body rebelled, that broken piece reflects your healing power. <laughs> you did a good job. your handiwork. Work on, God. Work on. Work on, God. Work on. I withhold nothing. In Jesus' name.